I fracked up. I fracked up. Let's talk about it. So for those of you that follow my Instagram, you'll already know what I'm about to say. But for those of you that don't, I hope you find pleasure in my pain and maybe learn a little lesson while you're at it. This happened almost exactly a month ago. It was a beautiful, beautiful Sunday. And the day started off with this awesome ride. I went out with my girlfriend and some of my buddies. We took some Surons up into the hills and it was a great time off-roading. Uh, near the end, we were I wanted everyone to try this hill climb. And in order to do the hill climb, you had to come down it. And uh, Min was the last one to come down. And one thing led to another and she flew over her handlebars and totally wiped out. I'll put some pictures up. So after that we were all a little, uh, we were done. So we headed out, came back, and uh, it was still early in the day so I got some school work done. I'm a senior in college. And I finished my work and I was thinking, you know, that first ride was pretty mellow. I kind of want to keep riding. So I went back out on my own and I went to my favorite natural feature because it's like this jump. I'll, show, I'll, I'll put footage. It's like this dirt incline that basically is a jump into this parking lot. And you can put this like wood plank and make it a jump coming down as well. I love hitting it. I hit it all the time. And I really wanted to blow off some steam so I went there. And there was something different this time. There was Because it's a parking lot, there was a car parked where I usually do the jump. And there's like a bunch of rocks and stuff so where I usually do it I had already cleared it out and confirmed that it was a safe place to jump but that day there was a car parked right there so instead of going somewhere else i just decided to do the jump maybe like two feet to the right and i went up jumped into the parking lot great jump i was in a great mood just having a you know normal joy ride and i wanted to jump back down like i usually do so i put the wood plank there but again like two feet to the to the right from where I usually do it and I jump it and I just didn't realize how many rocks there were on the landing I took for granted where I usually do it there's no rocks but just a couple feet to the side there were a ton of rocks anyway I sent it it was a gnarly jump I wish I was filming it got crazy air more so than I usually do and as a result landed right sort of right where the incline turns into flat so it was a bad landing, I overshot it, and there were a lot of rocks there. So I totally washed out. I fell on the left side of my bike, but I braced myself with my right wrist and my left knee. I, I got up immediately, which is a rookie mistake. When you fall like that, you should always take a minute to collect yourself unless you're like in the middle of the road, collect yourself and, and sort of mentally scan your body and see if you're injured because you can do what I did and get right back up and, and probably make it worse. So let me just adjust this. So I picked the bike right back up and actually rode up the, uh, the jump and by the time I got to the top, I realized I, I fucked up my wrist. It was basically numb with pain. Like there was so much adrenaline that I couldn't really feel it, but I knew it was in pain. So I got off the bike. I immediately took the glove off of my right hand because um, just in case it was broken, I wanted the glove off if it started swelling or whatever. And I just took a couple minutes. I was sort of holding it and like doing the family guy like, Anyway, it was late in the day and all my friends were busy doing this or that, so I really didn't want to ask anyone for a ride home. So, <laughs> rookie mistake, I tried to ride back. I mean, it's my right hand, right? Which is the throttle hand. And it hurt so, like even with the adrenaline, it hurt so much to hit the throttle. So I was like, I would hit the throttle like this. <laughs> it doesn't even matter that I had the cast on because I was keeping it straight. I was holding it without bending my wrist and like, using my elbow to, to twist the throttle and it hurt so much but it was just enough 
to give me some momentum so I would like hit the throttle and then I would coast. I turned my regen down, I would coast, I would slow down, I'd hit the throttle again, coast. And I did that for about three miles to get back, which it was really, it was the longest three miles I've ever ridden on the Suron. It was incredibly uncomfortable. But I finally got home and I was in uh, the first stage of grief, which is denial. Or maybe that's, that might not be the first stage. To me, that's the first stage. And I was like, yeah, no, it's not broken. Um, it's definitely just sprained. Because in high school, I had broken my left elbow and that hurt more than really what I was feeling with the wrist. Uh, and with the elbow, it hurt, right? And then it kept getting worse and worse. The pain get, kept getting worse and worse. Whereas with the wrist, once the adrenaline wore off after I'd gotten home and iced it, it just sort of consistently hurt and was just sort of like aching and throbbing. So I convinced myself it was a sprain. I iced it, I wrapped it up, I'll put a picture, and um, tried to sleep that night. I did not sleep at all. I was tossing and turning. It was, it was throbbing a lot, so I was keeping it elevated. It was a very unpleasant night sleep. Um, basically first thing in the morning, like 8 a.m., I got in my car, did the, you know, the, the gear shifter with my right, with my left hand, not a gear shifter, but you know, putting it into drive, um, and basically drove to an urgent care with just my left hand, which is fine, I usually drive one-handed anyway. And they did a x-ray on my right wrist, and it was clear that it was broken. It was broken in two places on the distal radius and the distal ulna, ulna, which are the two main bones in your forearm that meet up in your wrist. Um, I'll put the x-ray, it doesn't look terrible, but the doctor was like, yeah, those are both definitely broken. Um, fortunately, and by broken, I, I asked, oh, is it a hairline fracture? fracture? No, he said it's it broken was sort of, the, that those bone fragments were disconnected. It was a full break, but they weren't disconnected far enough to warrant surgery I just needed a cast so um, that was an urgent care they don't put casts on so you have to go to an orthopedics clinic for that so they just gave me a brace and made an appointment for the following day to put a cast on went to the orthopedics he confirmed it was broken he put the cast on which I'll, I'll put some video in here and uh, the doctor told me yeah it's broken in two places Bone takes about five weeks to heal. You don't need surgery, but we're gonna, you, you can't use the hand for the five weeks. So I was really bummed out, right? Because I had exactly five weeks before school finished. And as a senior in college, that's finals. And that's when you have the most work to do. So uh, I had about 25 pages to write with just my left hand, as well as some other assignments I had to do in order to graduate and uh, I was pretty stressed not gonna lie walking out of the clinic with the cast on and realizing that I only have my non-dominant hand to do finals and keep the channel running I, to be honest I was much more concerned about the channel than my finals <laughs> I was thinking how am I gonna film videos and uh, fortunately I actually had a lot of videos saved up so I've been sort of coasting on those and I've been able to film a lot of really exciting videos which I'll talk about in a minute Basically the next day, I hit up my man Domo, who if you've been watching the channel, he's the guy who made the world's fastest razor. He also made that Tesla that I, the Tesla quad that I reviewed. And I was like, Domo, you gotta help me throw a thumb throttle on the Suron. I need to ride, I need to be able to get to class. And also I need to have something that's fun because I'm dying. It's like one day I'm already dying inside, not being able to do stuff. So he was like, sure, come over and and he did a hell of a job putting this left hand thumb throttle on the 72 volt Suron so I was able to get to and from school I was able to run errands on my own and anyone that's been injured knows that having independence is like the biggest thing like you don't want to always be asking people for rides you don't want to be asking people for favors so having mobility was really big for me so shout out Domo for hooking me up with the thumb throttle it was really hard to get used to initially because you got all this power on just your thumb. And it was my left hand, I'm a right-handed person, so uh, it was definitely challenging to get used to it. At this point, after a month since this happened, I feel like a lefty. Like, I'll reach for stuff with my left hand without even thinking about it. Um, it's gonna be really interesting when I get the cast off, I'll be super ambidextrous.
so basically what I was doing what I've been doing since then is I've been editing videos that I had filmed but not had a chance to edit uh, which was really great so that I can sort of get, move past some of the older projects and, and move into newer ones I did something really really big I bought a truck okay it's I've been holding it a secret I haven't been posting it on Instagram I haven't been posting anything on YouTube but I bought a truck it's super super cool so stay tuned for that I've also been filming some other videos about hacking the Talaria uh, a lot of cool stuff coming there will not be a single week without videos and I also have just been spending more time with the people that are close to me because you know bike life you spend all your time riding bikes you don't hang out with your homies as much unless they also ride so I've been able to hang out with my friends my girlfriend after all was said and done even with full insurance full health insurance it cost me over seven hundred dollars out of pocket once I had the the cast on and that's not even including how much it's gonna cost to take it off that's a lot um, I mean it could have been worse I could have broken more bones I could have had bad health insurance but even with good health insurance and probably I would argue one of the smallest breaks you could possibly have it still costed over 700 out of pocket I thought that was a lot I just wanted to complain a little bit anyway as always thank you guys so very much for watching I've had so much report from you what experiences have you guys had with injuries let me know down below maybe give some tips on how to avoid it as always thank you so very much for watching and stay tuned